Inferno of the Hot Wings also is kind of coming to play here. <laughs> just got an mm-hmm. eager nod mm-hmm. from behind the camera over there. Some good one. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's a different beast. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now remember this from last time. <laughs> Hey everyone, we are here for another episode of Kimchi Bites. We've got five different levels of spice here. Uh, I'm here with Raphael, who's the co-founder of ProtoKit, which is an application chain framework on top of Mina uh, that a lot of our community members are building on top of. So I think before we get into it, we've got low spice all the way to high spice. If you've seen the episode, the series before, we've also got some American (laughs) hot wings sauce that we're adding on just to make Mm -hmm. it a little bit more interesting. Maybe we'll start first with with our first bite and then then make it a little bit of interest. Perfect. All right. That's the good stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So (laughs) what brought you into Mina? Yeah, so I, I started um, getting into Mina, I think, like one and a half years ago. Um, I was um, in the Ethereum ecosystem before that. And yeah, I just got excited about the idea of CK and, and started researching around. And like Mina immediately stood out and and kind of yeah um, had this amazing technology, this scientific approach to innovating on the existing tech. And yeah, and I think like the prospect of all the possible applications that could be built in this really new and, and uh, exciting ecosystem was like so appealing to me. And um, yeah, that's where I started kind of researching um, getting into it, started programming for um, the Diffuse Model projects and then got uh, into CK Ignite Code Zero, um, where I kind of got my first experiences with some bigger projects. And yeah, from there on out, it kind of everything's history. Um, now we kind of arrived at, at being building product kit. When you started to get involved, like, did you have an idea? Did you say, okay, I want to build in ZK for a specific reason? Or was like, what, what was the, did you have an, did you want to build a specific thing or were you just interested in exploring and? Yeah, not really. I was really like, yeah, this, this idea of zero knowledge and all the possibilities of that um, were really appealing. And, and like, I come from a engineering and math background. So kind of this new concept and this elegancy that zero knowledge has embedded into it, this was, was really, really appealing and I'm obviously I thought about all the application that could be built with it but primarily like the first thought was okay um, coming from the Ethereum ecosystem there were a lot of um, problems um, scaling issues then there were like the ideas of the first few roll-ups and but Mina kind of took that a few steps further mm. and that was like the, the yeah, ignition of my, my mm. interest in it. We're on to our second one here. Right. Maybe a little bit spicier. Let's see what we've got here. <laughs> We're debating chopstick techniques. <laughs> Raphael does it a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> Just to throw him under the bus right away. I do it like a veteran, I guess. Uses the under under one here, keep this stable. I mean, it's not so different, right? The claw. Yeah. I just do the, the middle finger differently. Nice. Well, I don't know. now the internet. Let's see. <laughs> okay, not too, not not too, not too spicy. We're getting there. Okay. okay. So uh, you came into the meeting because we started to explore. Obviously, um, I've seen your journey uh, kind of here and there, but I'd be curious to hear uh, a little bit more around um, ProtoKit. How you got like what? How you kind of got to where you are right now, and, and what ProtoKit represents. Uh, yeah. So so like I said. When I started, I kind of got into Zika apps and started researching that and or like learning learning the different techniques that are underlying it. But um, I kind of I kind of wanted for the technology to be used for more. So like Zika apps, I kind of had the impression were really good for some specific use cases. For example, where privacy is a big thing, mm. um, where there's like some KYC, for example, some meditations that don't really need collaboration of a large group and at the same time, through that architecture that Mina has as a blockchain, mm. as to as, as any layer one blockchain has, there are like fundamental limitations of the scalability and and like these are like well-known problems. So I kind of thought or wanted to build something that is that is 
bigger can enable more use cases and and has more possibilities for scaling creating big applications and especially yeah building some uh, yeah some some grander scheme of of products interoperating with each other while still having a lot of customizability and leveraging the underlying technology which is kimchi and zero knowledge proofs mm-hmm. um, to the maximum potential and mm-hmm. uh, so yeah the like product kit was kind of the result of, of, of iterating on these ideas and, and designing new and new um, projects or, or like different architectures and designs and after that iteration yeah we arrived at product kit and started building it so now this is level three i think this is where we start to turn up the spice a little bit okay okay <laughs> i don't know if the hot wings also is kind of coming to play here <laughs> just got an mm-hmm. eager nod mm-hmm. from behind the camera over there some good wine. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's a different beast, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember this from last time. It's a specific type. <laughs> okay, we have some lovely. <laughs> Did way more. People can't see you behind the camera, but there's a lot of muffled laughter that's going on. I think we've been pranked a little bit. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, how would you describe ProtoKit to a builder who's coming into the Mini ecosystem? You know, in, in just a few sentences, in terms yeah. of what it what it actually is. I think um, the main advancement that we've made is that CK apps on their own are like off-chain computation only. Yes. So that's like the whole premise. And to clarify, <laughs> uh, I think uh, terminology is important. There's Z- the ZK apps protocol, yeah. like private smart contracts. Exactly. And then there's also like zero knowledge applications. Sometimes we throw those around, but in this context, we're talking about the smart contract protocol. Um, exactly. ZK yeah. apps. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. ZK apps is the default mm. MENA layer one protocol. Mm-hmm. And they operate in off chain computation only. Mm-hmm. And so there come some, some challenges with that. Mm. Primarily that you have to build a lot of infrastructure to coordinate different people. Mm-hmm. Or if multiple people want to um, interact with the same protocol. And so I think the main innovation that we did is we combined this on-chain execution that's like known from other blockchains like Ethereum or mm-hmm. whatever, and the new off-chain paradigm that Mina introduces, and we combine it to a hybrid execution model. So with ProtoKit, you can build on-chain logic and combine it super easily with off-chain execution. Okay. And off-chain execution obviously is like used for privacy mm-hmm. or like yeah, any any sensitive data that you want to keep to yourself, you can compute it off-chain and then combine that with ProtoKit and the on-chain execution, which then is kind of um, aggr- or coordinating the different different transactions and, and, and um, executions coming in. Yes. And then in the end, proving all of that together and going to Mina to settle and kind of confirm the, the correct execution of the, of the chain. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I am. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's good. I think there's a key in like how you swallow it as well, because last time it like you know, yeah, it hit me. I mean, I still feel it. Like, I don't know how much you're supposed to chew. This one looks nice and saucy on the top, so I have a feeling there's some really dark red in there. Yeah, there's some darkness going on. Okay, yeah, here we it. go. <laughs> Get ready for the pain. Yeah, here it comes. <laughs> okay, so one of the reasons <laughs> I think Mina can be considered the proof of everything, and we're also kind of considering it a you know the proof of everything, meaning Mina itself is a proof. Um, you can also look at it like a roll up, but there's a re- some really attractive um, reasons as a settlement layer, mm-hmm. and I think one of the um, interesting, you know, you pointed out many times uh, Mina's unique properties as a layer one, but specifically as a settlement layer for a layer two coming and settling on. If you could yeah. maybe talk a little bit about sure. um, that. <laughs> coming from the main innovation, hmm. that <laughs> <laughs> that uh, execution or like the whole blockchain is a, is a proof. So what that carries with it is that the proof for application of incoming transaction is native so that so kind of proof verification is super expensive on other change you have to write custom verifiers and write it in some vm that's not ck native mm-hmm. but for mina that's embedded into the proof system and into the blockchain so that makes it super efficient and cheap to 
because if you use it and also easy to do it right mm -hmm. you don't have to write anything you can just reuse it and, and you have that that settlement and verification functionality <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, there you go yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and maybe one of the things that we've talked about as well as the <laughs> recursion uh, because mm -hmm. uh, proofs are um, proved into other proofs or you can verify uh, other proofs all rolled up in one proof that becomes really interesting from maybe if you settle from protokit down onto the layer one but there's also composability if you settle to mean in some other context at any point in time that yeah. it can all be rolled up into that one proof of everything exactly um, exactly yeah. any roll up that settles to mina is kind of transitively proven in that one constant size proof of mina itself okay now maybe let's talk a little bit about use cases and <laughs> as mina is approaching um <laughs> uh zk apps or you know the zk apps protocol is being upgraded um on mainnet and what are some things that get you excited um that you would like to see in the mini ecosystem or built on protocol or you know just in general yeah so i think uh, the first um yeah big chunk of use cases are the traditional um blockchain ones DeFi, mm -hmm. nfts mm -hmm. lending um yeah, these are obviously a big part of that, but but what I think can can augment that whole experience is the KYC properties of, of Mina. Like we can make KYC enabled blockchain applications that do that all privately and securely. I think that's a super big big um, topic, and there's also a lot of infrastructure that that is going to be, be yeah built mm. that kind of. Um, um, enables the MENA ecosystem to be the most efficient, the mm. best usable, uh, cheapest, and the most secure and decentralized um, ecosystem that's out there. And I think the combination of all the technologies kind of lead to, a, to yeah, the, the widest spectrum of, of applications mm. um, anywhere out there. I think. Mm. Mm. We think about um, the, modu like the modularity stack, uh, the modular stack in the context of like Web3 alone, but Mina potentially can play a role as the general set of protocols that people access the internet, similar to HTTP, yeah. added on with SSL, now added on with Mina. Like it also brings a whole nother level of verification and trust on the internet. That um, again, it kind of brings it out bigger, a much bigger scope than just the Web three properties alone. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think I think Mina can be can be a, a kind of a, a base layer for security and decentralization. And whereas, whereas all applications that might exist on Web3 kind of come together through a long pipeline of different proof aggregation recursions, come together in this one single, single layer that kind of yeah, takes care of all. And, and this is the single point where you can go to where you have mathematically proven something that could be anything. And through that, I think it can be the central gateway to, to a Web3 ecosystem. Mm. Yeah, that was something that Evan and I were talking about as well. The API, like thinking about Mina as an API to all Web3 data. Or, and then as more Web2 data comes in, becomes provable um, through Web3 mechanisms, then then the idea of accessing it just through one proof is actually quite interesting. Yeah, I, I think I think it's more about the, the security and the the proof of computation that comes with, with it mm -hmm. rather than some, some API that, that because I imagine the ecosystem having many different APIs, many different use cases that we can't really imagine right now. Mm. And so we, we want to keep that as open as possible as with mm. ProKit. And in the end, what Mina kind of gives us is these guarantees and this nice uh, yeah, certainties about something mm. um, which we can kind of use to augment the traditional Web2 experience to kind of arrive at a, at a, at a better product offering and, and guarantees you basically. Yeah. We're on to our last in our thoughts. Um, oh, maybe not. not, maybe not. I think maybe there. <laughs> <laughs> nice little dessert, maybe. <laughs> mm. This one's good. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. It's actually not all at all. Yeah. Mm. They treat it as nicely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I guess like wrapping up, um, what's kind of next on the roadmap for ProtoKit? I know you, you're thinking about a few different things, both on the infrastructure, but also on the application side. Yeah. We'd be curious to hear what's coming next. As I've mentioned, like the infrastructure is a big, big part of, of what we do and what we want to build. And so there's a few things that that we, that we have to build and that, that will 
increase the, the security and the guarantees the product has. Mm. And one of that would be the data availability layer that is aligned with, with the MENA concept and the proof system. And this is like coming soon, hopefully. And then we're also like looking into the operability solutions, shared sequencing, um, proposal builder separation. Like these mm. are all some, some and primitives that kind of allow us to be to kind of go away from this centralized roll-up um, mm. actor and kind of decentralize the whole process and make it more permissionless for anyone to join and for anyone to participate. And I think from within the ecosystem as well, we're starting to see a lot of people um, start to build their own projects on top of Protocate as well. I think we have a sealed bit market out of T marketplace that's yeah. that's in the works. There's a few different games that are being built, um, so it's pretty cool it's to see it. Not only just at this at this early stage, not only being built by you, by you and um, Matei, but also from the rest of the community <coughs> starting to adopt it. <laughs> a lot of great things are already built on ProKit, like you mentioned, the NFT bid auctions. That's like there's an MVP already usable. Like you can you can already use it with ProKit powering the whole, whole stack. And there's a lot of other projects that are super excited to build on ProKit and, and kind of yeah enhance their their experience. And, and enable those use cases. Before we go, final closing words. If you are speaking to folks who are coming into the meaning community and they're curious based off of what we've talked about today, where would you recommend them to get started, to start learning and, and getting involved? I think the, the, the Mina Discord is a really great place to start. And um, we're obviously there all the time to answer questions and, and to guide new people through the journey. But in terms of documentation, there is the ProtoKit website where there's a comprehensive set of docs where you can uh, yeah, read into it, see how you can use it. Um, there's a few tutorials on, on how you can yeah, write your first own application and, and kind of grow from there. And yeah, the Mina, Mina, Mina docs is also very powerful. It, it, it introduces you to, to a lot of CK concepts and introduces you to OMJS, which ProtoKit also uses under the hood. So you kind of need to act, interact mm -hmm. with both of those APIs. Um, yeah, so these are two um, great ways to kind of get educated and get started. And yeah, always the, we also have a ProtoKit Discord where we kind of can really deep dive into ProtoKit specific concepts and yeah, provide some assistance there. Um, yeah, and obviously Twitter all over the map. Yeah, nice. exactly. <laughs> all right. Thanks for yeah. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for having me.